Welcome to Dirt Man Talking. Tonight's story is from the incredible mind of 02321 from over on Reddit No Sleep. When as ever, please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. Why it really does help build the channel and our community further. And one on hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story. And title. Sometimes getting home is not an easy walk in the park. Let's get straight into that. The transit system in my city sucks. Any buses take at least 45 minutes to get to the university, to my cheap apartment, but if I walk through the park, it would only take 15 minutes. After a full day of classes and working, I hated walking home. But I also wanted to get into bed as fast as possible. And dragging my tired feet along, I made the long trek through the park almost every night. I did come across some homeless men asking for change. Being a broke student, I couldn't give them much. Though I could give them sandwiches from my job. They were just going to be thrown out at the end of the night. Most of them appreciated the gesture. One man named Eddie always thanked me and walked along with me for a few minutes, making sure I got through the darker part of the park safely. And because of his overall manner, I fretted over his motives until I realised he was a pretty decent guy under his appearance. I started to get worried when a few days went by and I didn't see any of the regulars in the park. Well, it wasn't unusual. Sometimes the cops ran them out, thinking they were doing drugs or creating a mess. The homeless men only quietly drank and collected bottles or cans along the path. Honestly, those men were the ones taking care of the park better than the paid city workers. And my roommates were thankful for the leftovers I grabbed from work that should have gone to the regulars, but I still wondered about the men I'd slowly become friendly with. And as I walked along the dark path one night, I thought I saw a figure following behind me. I wasn't alarmed because I thought it was one of the men. From the smell drifting on the wind and how the figure stumbled behind, I felt positive there wasn't any danger. I just kept my music playing as I walked a little bit faster. I did think those homeless men were harmless, but sometimes well, they got awkward to be around if they were wasted or in a bad mood. And after my long day of work, I didn't want to deal with a tense interaction. I nearly reached a light post when I thought I heard a noise over my music. I turned it off and looked over my shoulder just in time to see a pale figure running down the path. It was something that looked pale and human, and not any of the men I'd ever come across before. The figure let out a heart-stopping scream and I bolted. My legs and chest burned right away. I might have been able to stand serving food for eight hours, but that didn't mean I could run for any length of time. The thing closed on my heels as I started to feel dizzy from the effort of running. I tripped over my own feet when I reached the light. My elbows and knees hit in a paved ground hard. I saw stars from the impact for a few moments. Panting, I looked around, trying to see what made me run in the first place. My eyes darted around in the dark, my head swimming. I expected to see that figure again, but well, nothing moved on the path. I forced my breathing to a slow, at least until I saw what I may have missed if I'd been walking down the path. And being on the ground made it so I could see under the bushes. The smell hit my nose the same time. I saw a dark colour staining the grass and leaves. The face stared back from under the bush, eyes lifeless, mouth open in a silent scream. I knew the face as one of the regulars in the park, and I choked on air and my hand flew to my pocket trying to find my phone. And to my horror, my pockets were empty. My phone had flown out when I crashed to the ground. I started to sit up and look for it, and another scream came, causing my body to freeze. A blur of white came leaping out from the bush. I raised my arms in a useless defense. Another body came down on top of mine, forcing us both to the ground. I screamed for help, praying that anyone could hear. Those screams were placed by cries of pain as the creature thrashed, trying to bite my face, and sank their teeth into my palm. I hooked one arm under the neck, using all of my strength to keep the face up and from it, ripping my throat out. I tried to use a thumb to dig into the eye socket, but the pale thing bit me first. I kicked, trying to get it off, shocked at how heavy the creature was, even though it looked impossibly thin. And we struggled with each other in a desperate, messy attempt towards our own goals. 
The pale monster wanted to eat me, and I wanted to get the hell away. Without any weapons or any knowledge of how to deal with a situation like this, I would be bound to fail. Tears clouded my vision as the thing tore into my hand even deeper, causing blood to spray, and for me to scream too loudly, it hurt my throat. My heart almost stopped from fear, and just as I thought I would be torn apart by those sharp teeth and claws, a sound rang out as the thing collapsed. Someone had walked over and smashed a bent steel pipe against my attacker's skull. I scrambled away, crying and holding up my torn hand, as another person dragged the monster off and into the middle of the light. I flinched, hearing the steel pipe coming down again and again. I couldn't even look up to see my rescuer fully from the stress and fear. Body trembling uncontrollably, I listened as the creature's head got smashed in until there was nothing left. And finally, I looked up, and movement caught my eyes. Another one of those lanky, pale things came screaming from the outside of the light towards the one who had saved me. I was nearly naked, skin a pale grey with blue veins showing, the hair falling out in clumps, leaving a messy, greasy mess behind. The mouth opened so wide, it might have been able to literally bite off someone's entire head. Hands outstretched, it leapt into the light. The still pipe came down, knocking a pale monster out of midair, and it landed in front of my legs. I let out a yelp of fear as the pipe made short work of the second monster. Blood spraying from the wound from each swing. Grey brain matter spelling out and causing the creature to twitch for a few seconds. As grateful as I felt, I were not getting eaten. My body reacted from such a gory sight. I turned, throwing up my small dinner to the side. When I'd emptied out my stomach, I looked up at the man holding a pipe. His appearance was strange, but I didn't see just how strange until I stopped shaking long enough to get a good look. Aside from the pipe, he didn't have any weapons. It was as if he picked up the first thing he found on the ground to use to kill these monsters. He wore white gloves now stained with blood, and rust from the pipe. His sharp dress shoes also stained with blood. And he wore a suit, but that wasn't what made my brain almost shut down. His face was hidden by a large bunny mascot face, one ear up and one ear down. The bunny's eyes massive and looked too freaky to be cute, like the person designing a mask wanted it to be cute but went overboard, causing it to look menacing with the large eyes. The blood now splattered on the white fur didn't help either. But as I stared, I noticed something off. I couldn't see any eye holes. How the hell did this guy see anything out of that mask, especially in the dark? In the distance, I heard sirens. My shoulders dropped with the tension I felt for a second, when I thought I was going to be saved. Cops would then show up and I could go to the hospital for my hand. I opened my mouth to question the man and to thank him when he dropped the pipe. And with one swift movement, he closed the distance and kicked his foot against my chest and I fell back to the ground. I didn't have a chance to move as his knees pinned both of my arms down. I opened my mouth to scream again as one glove hand covered it, muffling the noise. I fought for my life and didn't move the mask-wearing widow an inch. He lifted his hand from my mouth to pull a small case from his suit pocket. I screamed, hoping the cops would hear, and the noise died in my throat as he pulled out a syringe from the case. My head was feeling faint from the blood loss, but the sight of the needle nearly made me pass out. I'd never been so scared in my life. Getting attacked by that monster was less frightening than seeing a syringe filled with a mystery liquid. I fought even harder, doing nothing to avoid the masked man grabbing my face with one hand, and with one other steady gloved hand, he started to bring the needle closer. My mouth became dry as he grabbed my eyelids with two fingers, forcing my left eye open. I would rather be eaten by that monster than what he had in mind. The needle came closer. I heard people starting to come down the path, shouting orders and asking if everything was alright. My body froze when the tip of the needle went into my eye, and I passed out into a very long darkness. When I woke up, I found myself on a hospital bed and surely went into hysterics. Some police arrived to take statements and asked for some drug tests to be taken after hearing my story. Well, I don't blame them for that. 
I heard a body of a homeless man was found nearby where I fainted, along with lots of blood. And they weren't able to figure out who had killed the man or who the blood came from. The mystery blood assumed to be at least a few hours old, even though they found me on the path only a few minutes after I had passed out. Oh, the test came back clean and I was released a few days later. The police also told me that Eddie heard screaming in the park and called them. I would need to thank him later when we came across each other again. I made a habit of looking at my left eye in the mirror before bed, trying to see any damage. My hand healed up fine, but I feared a wound is going to leave a nasty scar. I thought I would be too stressed out to eat after such an ordeal, but huh, the opposite happened. I couldn't stop eating. A dull hunger lingered in the pit of my stomach now. Always there, no matter how much I ate in a day. I don't seem to be gaining any weight. I think I've lost some. But I'm too scared to weigh myself. My skin has started to go paler, and I got on some comments on my sickly appearance. I've taken time off work, unsure of when or if I'll be back. And I'm keeping an eye out for any other weird signs or changes. I can't sleep from overthinking about the very simple fact one that I don't want to face, but deep down I know it's true. I might have been better if that creature killed me that night. And that the man who tried to save me failed. Whatever he injected into my eye simply didn't work or only delayed what was coming. I'd rather die than turn into anything remotely close to the monster that attacked me. And with how things are looking, I'm not sure how long I'll remain myself for. And that scares me to death. I've started to make a habit of walking in the park, praying to find some answers or any sign of the man wearing the bunny mask. At least I was able to thank Eddie for calling for help that night. If I die because of a random monster attack while trying to get home, I won't bring that regret with me. Wow, 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 wow. Certainly another one. Wow. Short, but certainly made my skin crawl. Certainly brought back some memories of walking through dark parks on the way home from work. I'm not sure if a crackhead or a cryptid was going to jump out at any moment. Of course, a huge thank you to 02321, the incredible author from over on Reddit No Sleep, and become on a firm favourite of mine here on the channel. Really hope you enjoyed this one, 02. As ever, your work so thrilling, unique, and Always entertaining. I hope life is treating you well and you're fighting fit. Well, guys and girls as ever, you know the drill. Please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help both the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Crypto Crew. Now if you think you can pen a story pack on a punch like that, then please do get in touch with me at the contact email, which is as on screen. Contact the dead one at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. I hope everybody's having a fantastic week at work or school, or perhaps you're a long distance driver. Whatever it is that you do, I hope you're enjoying it and are giving it your all. And try and stay fit and focused. But above all, guys, remember. Be safe, not sorry.